your boy Fifth of Sam, and I'm here chilling with my two favorite people. All right? Um, I have some favorite that are missing, so I cannot say you know just my two favorite people. <laughs> you see how you try to correct it? Yeah, just man. Say what you were nah. saying. No, no, no. I, I want I want my people back. It looks like. <laughs> yeah. So I'm chilling with two of my favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them. Nah, yeah, the that. first sentence were more like I don't know. That was that it was, was right. Right. Yeah, like it was, it was right. Line. I felt it. Yeah, <laughs> but we got it. Yeah, you know we had to media train him. That's that's what it is. Thank but. you, thank you, thank you. We're the favorite. Yeah, so I'm here with Evie and um, hello everybody and Davi. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, and today we going to uh, talk about a sensitive topic, but we feel like it's necessary because. It is. Uh, this month is uh, Suicide Awareness Month. Uh, I mean, Suicide Prevention Month, yes. right? And we just wanted to bring awareness um, um, and have a discussion, you know. Uh, let's see if uh, we can help somebody and even help ourselves, yeah. right, as we discuss this. Uh, so, um, as you all know, um, I mean, we, we could do some stuff. We live in Florida, mm -hmm. right? Um, and COVID plays a big part on the increase of suicide of uh, worldwide. Of course. Yes. Right. Um, but in the state of Florida, um, about 300, I mean, 3,135 suicide reported uh, in the state of Florida between 2021 and 2022. That's just a year. Wow. That's you, just a year. Can you say the number again? Uh, 3,135 uh, reports of suicide in the state of Florida. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a lot. That's crazy. It's very much crazy. Because it's funny, I never, you know, I don't watch news because I don't want to see bad news and stuff like that. <laughs> but I didn't know it was that high. Yeah. yeah. And it's only climbing, to be honest, with everything going on in the world. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, it's 14 point something to like every 100,000 uh, person, right? So that that's a high number. Yeah. yeah. And we don't often talk about this because, like I said, it's sensitive. It is. Right? It's uncomfortable. It is extremely uncomfortable. Uh, but because of what's going on and because of the rate um, that suicide is climbing, it's necessary for us to have discussions you know, about um, suicide. Um, now one thing we know for sure, the Bible does not have a direct term, right? Ad uh, address the topic of suicide directly, no, right? Yeah. In terms, right? But we do have some uh, biblical perspective, right? Um, that, you know, uh, give us principles, you know, for life, um, human dignity, um, and um, suffering, right? And the Bible also teaches us, you know, uh, how God rolls in our lives, right? How important it is. And to understand the Christian perspective, right? Um, on suicide. Um, and then, you know, I think there's many verses that we can use, you know, to help the audience. Um, not not necessarily like, you know, answer their questions because we can never do that. Mm -hmm. but, we, yeah, but, but we can have insight yeah. on, you know, how to battle certain, you know, thoughts, that we have when it comes to suicide i mean before we like go into the bible verse we should like break it down I'm, i didn't know not, that number was high i'm still shocked to yeah. be honest yeah. but maybe we can break it down and as in like you know the cause of why somebody will commit suicide in the different ages that there is because i'm yeah we, shocked I mean, that number is high as we go through we'll get to that uh we'll get to that you know um because we want to give as much information out as possible. Um, this information is made, you know, um, available to you. Of course. Uh, through your Google app. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so you can TV. also reach it. Um, and I would encourage those who don't live in Florida to look at the statistics on suicide in your the region your where, state, you, where you stay, yeah. right? And the state where you are. Um, like in country. Where we are. So Florida is the, suicide is like the eighth leading Eighth uh, leading cause of death in Florida. Ooh. The eighth leading cause of death in Florida. Wow. You know, that that's a high number. It is, it is, it is. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. So, have, have anybody that you know experienced suicidal thoughts? And 
how were you able to address it um, without? No, I, for, matter of fact, let, let me ask you this. Can you bring up the topic of suicide with somebody that's suicidal? It's not a trick question, by the way. It, it is not, that's but... a good question, though. <laughs> I, I want to say yes. Okay. The reason why I'm saying yes is because I feel like it depends on how you approach, you know, the topic with the person. Because you also have to be sensitive with them in a way. But at the same time, you also have to tell them the truth. And I have encountered people that said, hey, I have suicidal thoughts and stuff. And I'll bring the subject. But I think if other people hear it, it might seem very mean or differently. But I'll bring it up like, look, certain stuff we're doing, I'm like, if you were dead, we wouldn't be able to do this. Look how I would have missed this. Look how you would have missed this thing. We would have missed this beautiful moment. So, no, I don't want you to go and do something like this. You know what I mean? So, it depends on the person. I completely agree. I also... um... I've also encountered people who are, you know, feeling suicidal and everything. And I think, you know, your friends Mm -hmm. and you know how you can approach it. Like I've had one friend where I had to really, I don't want to say coddle, but be very gentle with her, you know? And I was like, Hey, like if this is something that you're thinking about, then you need to get help. But then I have another friend where it's like, girl, you're not going to kill yourself. Like get over it, (laughs) not get over it, but you need to be a little bit more frank, you know? Like, I think it just depends on how the person is and you you know your friends you know like you know how they how they cope and what they can they can handle and what they can you know right so i think um it's important to bring it up though i think actually because a lot of times and i can i can say this from personal experience when you're feeling like that and you kind of don't want to bring it up to people Mm -hmm. you know like in your head it's like no one else is thinking this like this is so crazy so far left field whatever and it's like someone else saying it to you kind of makes it real and you kind of can sit there and you're like oh like okay you know and it helps you rationalize your thoughts a little bit more in my opinion at least you know it's like if someone is like hey do you do you want to harm yourself like do you want to end your life you know like you can step outside of yourself and that spiraling that you are in Mm -hmm. and you know you can be like do i really want to do this or do i just am i just overwhelmed in the moment you know Um, that makes that makes sense well contrary to popular beliefs Mm -hmm. right Uh, talking about suicide will cause the person to kill themselves harm themselves um according to um uh, studies done by professionals um, it is best to bring it up. You never have this friend that, you know, uh, maybe their demeanor change, you know, um, their lifestyle, the way that you used to know them. That's not how they are. Anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as you say, hey, are you OK? Then they bust out crying. Yeah. <laughs> right. Never have one of those friends. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because it's it's a cry for help. There's always a cry for help. You just need to. A- sit there and actually Correct. look at the signs. We need to be attentive to the signs, yeah. right? Yeah. So if I don't ask you, like, do you have plans to kill yourself? <laughs> you have to be blunt. You have to. You have to. Like, you know, if somebody's in deep depression, right, it takes that question for them to open up. Yeah. Man, because like... If you, and, if you ask, I'm sorry. No, you If good. you ask, you know, are you okay? They're going to be like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's yeah, 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 good. Fine, you know, good. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you need to really go you, down you to be blind. yeah be like do you want to kill yourself like do you want to hurt yourself like what is going on in your head like explain it correct and you need to you need to show that you're not going to be scared off if they bring it up does that make sense right and then the the other thing is that a lot of times when people share their feelings with us mm-hmm. we tend to judge them and we tend to dismiss them yeah, instead of true. validating They're how feeling. they feel mm-hmm. you I can't stand it when I'm telling somebody how I feel and they're telling me, well, this is how you should feel. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't, I'll give you the, I didn't ask you for that. your opinion at this moment. <laughs> I'm not saying your opinion does not matter, but validate the person's feeling, mm-hmm. validate their thoughts, right? Validate yeah. the state that they are in. So that way you may know, right? Not in depth, but somehow, 
somewhat, you know, how to, to help like, them. I mean, I think, you know, it's funny because one thing I was thinking this week is that how, like, I don't think anybody have the right to tell someone how you should feel. Like what type They don't of have the right, but they sure do. <laughs> like, <laughs> sure who do. are you to tell them? Like, the person at, and the person should be able to express themselves. And I feel like, I don't know if it's a culture thing. Maybe I'm thinking it is. How, like, sometimes it's hard for you to ask the person, hey, do you feel like you want to harm yourself? Because you feel... Cause, I'm thinking culturally and some like, you know, the Haitian culture is like if if a parent went to a kid and asked them, it will feel like, oh, the people going to judge them because it's like, oh, why your kids is like this, you know, yeah. or oh, now your kids want to kill themselves or oh, now look what so and so's daughter's doing It's more like about protecting the names instead of protecting that child. So I feel like it's hard for them to bring up the subject. It's hard for them to ask. Even a parent is hard for a child to ask the parent, "Hey, are, are you, you do you, okay? are you okay? Do you feel like you're gonna kill yourself?" Yeah. Because we always either put you know we put our parents in this high standard. We don't really ask those type of questions. So, I I think for people out there, it's good to make it. I'm not saying to be comfortable with the subject. I think you need. To I be think you, you, think you, you need do. to be comfortable I mean, you, with you it you and do just because bring. Because like, let's say, you know, the person don't want to talk about it. Maybe it was a cultural, you know, uh, barrier, yeah. right? And how do we get to that? How do we get to the point of addressing the elephant in the room yeah. that without feeling that, hey, I might hurt your feelings or I might cause you to do something, right? Um, like, I think, yeah, we, we should be honest about it. And while you were talking, you know, you're talking about the, uh, you know, a kid, you know, um, being uh, asked that question and it, it was fascinating to find out that in the state of Florida actually uh, the older uh, population is more prone to suicide than the younger population yeah. right so remember Florida has the largest population of military yeah right out of the whole country like veterans and veterans retired, yeah, right yeah, yeah. they they are resigned in the state of florida sunshine state sunshine state and they have the highest uh rate of suicide for that particular population like the age so group. we need to keep that in mind as well uh young adults between the age of 15 to 24 is the second uh leading cause of death um uh, in the state of florida when it comes to, I mean, I think it's kind of like eye opening too. So that way we can check on our grandparents, check in the older generation because uh. they, yes, because you know, like sometimes I know they, I know they call us the sensitive generation because we like we want to be no, open about no, no. it. We're not sensitive. We're not. Who, who said that? <laughs> we have it into recording. Do you want us right, to bring so, it back? No, let, let me let me let me let me fix it for the person that said that. Okay, mm. you guys are not sensitive at all. You guys are the soft. Generation. You know, that's the problem because I feel like the older generation when I'm they wanna seem tough. That's what's yeah. killing them. You know, like I was the <laughs> <What? laughs> They wanna be tough, you know. You guys wanna the older generation wanna show like they have it together when they don't have it together. Because yeah. imagine if you have your grandparents and they dealing with suicide. Who do they go to? Who are they going to go to? Us, they're not really because they feel like they don't want in charge. They don't want providing. They don't want, um, you know, making sure they're that we always... the head of the household. They you know what be, I mean? They need to be good for everybody else. So it's like they don't really have somebody yeah. to go to or to count on and they cannot count on us because they want us to see them as this, like, hey, like, you know, count on me instead of the other way around. Yeah. And, you know, I think one of the biggest problems um, that we face today, a lot of our uh, older adults um, are playing the role of God. Let me explain. God is, God is a, never changed. God is, right, sovereign. He is... Um, omnipotent he's omnipresent he there's no beginning or end with god right but time changes right the time that our grandparents lived 
it's not the same today. But we we don't accept changes like that. It's hard for them to adapt. All right. Just like you, right? Trans the transition from middle school to high school is, is a hard transition. The transition from high school, high school to, to college, college is. is a harder transition. And the transition from college to real life, <laughs> oh, yeah. that's a killer. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to teach you some. So with them, it's hard for them to transition because the time that they live, even though they are still living, right? Mm -hmm. But they'll tell you like, oh, petit moyen, vive déjà, right? Yeah. But they're still alive. They just don't want to accept what we got going on over here. <laughs> that's true. Right? So I think that's one of the biggest problems. God never changed. God stays the same. But how can we help those, like, when it comes to societal, like, how can we help those older generation? How can we approach them to know, hey, they are really dealing with that. And it's okay. They can count on us, the younger generation, or they can go and seek for help. Because not all... You know, older because you know they don't listen. At times they do not listen to nobody because they already lived it. They know it already. They know what to do. You know, yeah. they've been here for the longest. But how can we help them? They they don't know it all. Um, I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you this story right here. So, <laughs> um, my dad visited for the summer. Um, it was it was good to see him, and you know, like we spent some time together, and um, I bought him a pair of jeans. And I told him to put it on and um, some sneakers because we're going somewhere. And he had, you know, <laughs> his church pants on, his church shoes, shoes on, uh, right? And I I don't remember, I don't recall my dad ever wearing anything other than church clothes to go anywhere. <laughs> you hear? So uh, when he put it on, and he was like, you know, a bit uncomfortable, right, mm -hmm. at first. And then he started smiling. And he said this is the first time he wore jeans in his life. Aww. Aww. Yeah. No, that's not. That's that. That's a shame. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. No, yeah, no, it's understand. not. But, but everybody have their own fashion. But it, it's no matter what I do, like, you know, I remember for, you know, during my wedding, I wanted him you know, in a slam suit. And it was hard to put him in a slam suit because mm. this man wanted a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just that, like, you know, they used to to one way, one thing, and it's hard for them to change their mind because yeah. they don't want to open their mind to change because change is scary, right? So if it's scary for us, it's even scary for them because the time that they knew is, is really like back there. You know, so we need to be more patient with them. I agree. Uh, we need to be more open with them. Uh, we need to be more understanding of their feelings and um, their thoughts. And I think with open conversation, we can help them to get yeah. there. And then, you know, um, obviously, like, we have to advise them about professional help, right? Because yeah. our parents are stubborn. When it comes to professional help, whether it is a doctor, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, or anything Anything's else that have a, <laughs> a it's, it's all, of it. <laughs> er, all of it. you know, so we really have to take the time to educate our parents, yeah. um, and maybe not tell them that you're gonna educate them because they're gonna take that as you know, oh, you know, <laughs> you know? right. So I expect it good boy. Right. So we really need to take the time to to teach them, you know. I think that's necessary. It is. All right. So like I know like you guys gonna throw me with this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what accent? Like <laughs> what go ahead. Throw me with this. Um do you guys know what gender have the highest rate of suicide? It's men. It's men. Yeah. It's men. They always yeah. said it's men. Oh, they always say? <laughs> they they always say. Why is that? What do you think that is? Um, I think it's... It has to do with, you know, like, society and, you know, gender roles and toxic masculinity and all that foolishness. But it's... It's hard for, you know, guys to 
be vulnerable and to be I don't want to say be weak, but to show weakness in a sense, you know, asking for help. It's a lot. And even though it is, it does feel like you are being very weak. It's a, one of the strongest things you could do, you know, to ask for help and to actively seek help. But, um, yeah, like guys have a lot of pressure on them. You know, they need to they do. be the head of the household and provide and this and this and this and this and this. <laughs> and I guess over Finally. I can't even imagine. Like, Two I'd be women that understand <laughs> the struggle of men. Yo, like it's like some men are scared to even open up to their significant other because of the judgment. I know. That comes with opening up and telling somebody your feelings, telling somebody how, you know, what's hurting you because, you know, and you're vulnerable moments you don't want to seem weak yeah right that's the, i think that's the issue it you know is. one of the sentence i hated when i was i mean now i hated it is men don't cry oh i hate that oh my I hate that. goodness when boys I, don't, cry, boys men don't, don't cry. cry i hate it i hate it i hate it's, it i hate it when i was little because i hear it all the time so when i was little like if i if i were to see a man crying i'm like okay i thought it says you don't cry so stop crying it used to be like this but then as I am getting older, and I'm like, it's sorry to say this, but it's a beautiful thing when I'm in crap because beautiful. you, yes, it you is. get to see them, you get it to. Is. see I heard that, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Cry on. <laughs> you really get to see them, like in that moment of weakness, and they can open up and talk up. You really go; it goes deep into like the emotion. Yeah. So I'm like, why would somebody tell people not to cry? No, go at it. I mean, it takes strength. It's, it's scary. So I, I saw this reel uh, earlier. So uh, the guy went and, you know, lays hands on, you know, the, the wife's head or the significant other head. And she's on vacation. She's traveling everywhere. She's shopping and, you know, she's spending money. Right. And when she, you know, she's smiling and everything. Right. And reverse side. The man was smiling and he sat down when she placed her hand on his forehead. He was screaming in anguish. Right? Yeah. And to tell you the truth, as a man, sometimes that's our thoughts. We're afraid to let it out because we don't want to be looked at, you know, a certain way. Yeah. We don't want to be looked at as weak, you know, um, our vulnerability at times uh, causes people to <laughs> misunderstood <laughs> the fact that we not to play with. So we rather hold in uh, the anger. We rather hold in the hurt, the pain, uh, because we don't want to be judging that light. Yeah. Um, and men are suffering. In silence, you guys are right, Absolutely. and it's um, horrible. Yeah, even with the with with this twenty twenty four, like like you know, speak your mind. <laughs> men still suffer. Even the, yeah, you know, a woman could say whatever she wanted she want to say and might get away with it a hundred times over. As soon as a man says something, it, no, I can't even say that. <laughs> I'm not even. I, mean, I think I'm not even gonna finish. I, I feel like I think society need to change their. We need to change our mindset, as in like. What can we do? Because we already know. Like, hey, we know, like, a man is not going to sit there and just like, okay, this is what I'm going to. Let me just give you a whole idea. Because we want men, it's like, how you doing? You okay? We might not say that first, but then I promise you, after a couple minutes, we're just going to go down the list. Like, this is what's going on. Men yeah. is not going to do that. So I think it's for us to give them that, that make them feel safe i feel yeah, like sometimes men don't feel, feel safe, safe to express themselves because they don't want to feel we, like we a like, burden we like that too <laughs> and, and i'm tired that we have to do that you know behind closed doors yeah. that's that's I'm bad tired that we do like, I, I like a man like i like a man that can express himself yeah. i don't you I'm never gonna... heard a wife says i know him don't worry about him he, he's not <laughs> like that <laughs> right because she knows her men from, you know, in his vulnerable state. Yeah. And I applaud every wife, every girlfriend that allow a man the space to be themselves. Uh, because society does not give us that um, openness that yeah. and, and that room, you know, for us to be vulnerable. So thank you to you ladies who have that, you know, um, mindset and 
have enough sense, you know, to take care of your men, you know, mentally. Mentally, yes. And yeah, we, is we appreciate that. So check this out. So uh, men are four times higher mm -hmm. to commit suicide than women, right? Yeah. Guess what? The women's the women have the highest reporting rate of suicide than, than men. Because men don't talk. You guys don't want... Why, why is that? Why you guys don't want... I mean, I understand you guys don't feel no, safe. I don't think you want to open it. <laughs> I kind of want to open it. How can we help? Like, how can... Question. Oh, yeah. They want to Men. Help. Yes. How can we help you help. guys? How can we help? Well... Because at the end of the day, yes. Because, you know, I saw something um, on Instagram. I think it was a security guard. Like, he was at a concert. And everybody was crying. He was... And then... He was crying too, and he was, and everybody was like, "Look at him doing his job, you know, taking care of everybody, but who's protecting him?" Yeah, in a way. So it's like, I I know I know the Bible talk about men being, you know, the head of the household, and that you also have to protect your wife. But in just because that's what God says, you need to be, you know, you have to protect your wife. That does not mean you're not, you know, somebody cannot take care of you. Because yeah. at the end of the day, Proverbs said, a wise woman build her house and a foolish one destroy it. So if I'm building my house, it that do involve, you know, my men's mental health. So how can we women help men? Because it's high. That number is high. It's high. Um, I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> you see, they don't want to talk. Um, <laughs> I don't have an answer for you, uh, but I'm sure. You know, you know, the majority of men will tell you, like, to take what we say for face value, mm -hmm. without judgment. Right? Because what example can I give you? Like, if I if I tell like. Um, if you tell your significant other, yo, I really don't like when you do this. And the person turns around and says, but you always do that. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't validate me. Yeah. You didn't listen to what I said. I just I said, I don't like <laughs> you when heard you heard what I said, so, but you didn't listen. To you me. didn't listen to what I said. So if at first you tell me, okay, I understand. I will try my best to change that. Yeah. Right. And later on, if I do something to you, then you, you could tell me, hey, I don't like when you... Then I'll... The thing is, we find ourselves validating, you know, your feelings on a daily basis. Then we yeah. do. Right? But mm -hmm. men are not validated often. Like I said, shout out to these women that, that, <laughs> that, that, that validate their men, yo. Yeah. And shout out to the mothers that raise their men with validation. Yes. You know, because, you know, like fathers that... that raise their daughters that way like we're not gonna do this man we're not gonna do this father's role is important it is, okay? it is. for Absolutely. the women yeah okay and i'm not saying the mother's role is not important as well but for a woman the you father's role is extremely important yeah and for us men the mother's role is important as well but we need those fathers you know, yeah. uh, so, to so at the end us. of the day, men are really important. So we have to protect those men. So oh, you didn't have... think they were important before? Of course they were. <laughs> <laughs> of course, as always. But we have to, I think, because listening to like how high the number is, I think it's us. I'm not saying like, oh, woman, you have to change for your man and this and that. You know, mothers, I think mm -hmm. we have to do a better job at listening because it's a communication, listening and give them that. Mm -hmm safe place where they can talk and we're not gonna judge because i know you know it's funny because i was having a conversation with a friend and it's like some of them is like oh i'm not gonna open this topic because for example women if we say something to women we're gonna be oh i remember you telling me this you said this to me so of course and then men probably gonna feel yeah, like you know what a, i'm not gonna say it again thing. because you're gonna feel i'm you're not throw it back to me <laughs> and this, yeah. this and this and this and so yeah. i think and it's us just, have to change the way absolutely and allow right. those men to like express so they can we can report it and we can help yeah. early. Yeah. Not just, you know. And on the thought of suicide, like, life is to be protected, man. Life is to it be is. cherished and honored. Um, you know, and uh, in Psalm 139, you know, it tells us that, you know, God knit us together in our mother's womb. You know, he knows us like, you know, he took his time to create us. We are important to God. And the matter of um, taking your life into your own hand 
and you know try to end your life um <clears throat> you really need to think about how god views you instead of how other human view you yeah. right because human will say things man to put us in deep depression um, and if we allow their words to travel through our mind, we will lose it, Absolutely. right? But shame on you, devil. You got no power over here. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> you know, and we need to take, you know, like we need to break this, this chain that, you know, the Bible says, I, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. Listen, God blesses me. Can no men curse me? Amen. No, Amen. You could throw your stones. And do whatever like, you, you can't want to curse do. me man like you're not god like i i don't believe in you i believe in god the creator who created me and and he told me that you know he has a plan for me and he's his perfect will is to give me you know to prosper me yeah. right so we need to have these affirmations for ourselves as well right yes. affirm yourself in christ knowing that you know he is your creator and you are important in his eye you know, the Bible tells us that, you know, God created us in his image and in the image of God, we are created. You know, that's a beautiful thing. When he looked it at is. us, he said we were good. You know, after he created us, it's like, man, like this is, you we'll know, this is me. This yeah. is my, my, my Picasso. Right. If I am God's Picasso, then I need to understand that I am, I, I have value. You do. Yes. I have value. Absolutely. I think. I think we have to um, understand that at the end of the day, the moment that we were born, the day we were born, you know that this is, it's a gift. I think our life is a gift given to us and we have to preserve it. We have to take care of it because at the end of the day, you are important. Everybody is important because if you are in this earth, it's because you're important. I don't think yeah. God would have sent you here down on earth and said you're not important because he has something for you he already have a purpose and absolutely that he called you for that i mean there is something you may not see it now because i know we're very impatient we are like yeah we may not see it now but you know if we're working on god's timing you will see why he puts you here so everybody is supposed to you know supposed to love yourself yeah love, love god's creation correct and you are correct the power of life and death is in god's hand it is. It's not in no human's hand. It's it's in God's hand. So trust God. And you know, I was thinking because when we when we think about suicide or thought, because I was like, it takes a lot of courage for someone to deal with something you know by themselves. Because usually you always I you always isolate yourself because it's just yeah. like you're taking into the battle by yourself, and it's like, yes, it's hard, but at the end of the day, seek help. Go to the people. God placed people in your life for a reason. It may not be your family. Because sometimes your your battle could be a family member. It could be friends. It could be yeah. people close to you. So and seek help. Somebody else. God will put someone to help you. Just have to be open. You know what I mean? You have to be open. And the same courage that you have. That that will take you to the moment of like, I want to kill myself. I promise you it will be the same courage that you will need for you to help somebody. Yeah. You will need for you to talk to someone. It just it just take a hi, how you doing? Sometimes we just like hi, yeah. like a hello. And start then... start the conversation. Absolutely. Um. So just so that you know, people may be aware, right? Um. Uh. Like methods of suicide. What do you guys think about that? Like, what do you guys think is the highest method of suicide? Now. Um, I don't know. I feel like it might be like, I feel like overdoses. I'm, I was thinking overdoses, like pills. Like pills. Like, I don't know. Drugs yeah. and stuff. Like, I'm Maybe like, that kind of vibe. Yeah. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. Like, I was looking at, I was, it's, I, I, stumble upon like an information that i saw and then how somebody killed himself and the, I, actually that person hanged himself like in a park it was a yeah. public place i'm like i was very shocked so i'm like that's that's one way okay but i don't know the highest one so i remember at first we said that florida has the highest rate of military retirees yes oh. remember yes, that yes i remember right so in florida the highest you know um method of suicide is firearms firearms it's actually 50 percent 
Oof. Uh, Firearms. Uh, hanging is like number two. Number two. And um, uh, pills and 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 you know uh, uh, like uh, overdose is like uh, number three. Yeah, because I, it makes sense because overdose, like if somebody find you on time, like they could pump your stomach can, out of yeah, hospital, can, right? Like hopefully yeah. somebody, you find know, you well, hopefully you never get to that point, right? Yeah. But if you do, they can pump your stomach out, right? Um, so it makes sense that it's it's number three, yeah. but yeah, firearm, firearm is, is, is like, the number one. Yeah, number it's one. Crazy. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so now that we discuss this a little bit can we talk about some of the risk factors um signs of suicide right how can somebody detect you know something might be wrong here like do do you think that there are signs absolutely <clears throat> absolutely i um, think so i think one of them will be isolation yeah it's the biggest thing for sure definitely the biggest thing. Somebody going to isolation. Constant depression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody... Because I feel like... You know how you always said, like, there's times people are seeking for help. They're not going to say, like, hey, I want to kill myself. But somebody that's like, you know, I don't think I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling depressed all the time. You have to ask. It's a hard question, but you have to bring the conversation and say, hey, do you ever think of, you know? Mm -hmm. I think I think that's one of them, too. Yeah. Um. And with that, actually... um. Like, if you have a friend or you've noticed that someone has been really isolated recently and all of a sudden they're just real happy, they want to hang out with everybody again, you need to really, like, be wary of that because, you know, they could be they could be planning something. They could know that suicidal. they're, you know, like, yeah. they could, Their last they're moment. feeling that little euphoria before, like, the end, essentially. And you need to really look out for that and make sure that it isn't, it isn't. You know, and also like you have to be attentive of like <clears throat> little little details, like because you might have a yeah. friend where it's like they always do certain things, but then out of nowhere, because I had I had somebody that I, I know that wanted to kill, you know that person wanted to kill um herself himself. I'm not saying who, but and <laughs> and it was like that little details of like that person called me and we we're on the phone and then. It was like we had having a good conversation, and at the end, the person was like, "Oh, bye, you know, I love you." I'm like, "Okay," and he sent me a text. I'm like, "Something's not right. Yeah. Like, what is going on? You don't usually text like this." And you know, you can tell sometimes. You know, you're like you have that intuition, like something yeah. is not right. That text felt like a goodbye text. So we also, you know, you have to check on your friends and see their how their pattern change in a way. Yeah, <clears throat> it makes sense. So everything that you guys stated is is like right on the money and those are uh mental health you know conditions yeah right um and again because we have a high rate of military you know personnel in the state of florida so like the mental health condition is higher amongst that group okay. uh, it's funny that today we are recording this i'm not sure when we're going to release it but it is 9 11 it is <laughs> right <laughs> And as you can all remember the tragic, you know, day, um, you know, where countless of, you know, thousands of people lost their lives and thousand uh, uh, others uh, lost their lives during the war. And those who came back from the war, who lost friends and loved ones, you know, um, uh, who lost people that were close to them and some were far from them, but they died right in their arms or, yeah. you know, next to them. So you can understand the trauma and, you know, everything that they faced in war. And then they have to bring themselves back here and be, you know... Um, Put in more correct. turmoil and just... Correct. Yeah. Correct. And, correct. like, y'all could fact check me on this. And I believe they also have the highest rate for homelessness. Yeah. Right? Like, so you, you understand that? They have not... Some of them have not been able to come back and and reestablish themselves in this society right because they still hearing the voices they're yeah. still seeing the bodies they're still experiencing you know um, ptsd right so uh we need to be a little bit more sensitive you know when it comes to our veterans and we need to protect them a little bit more 
Um, At all costs. Yeah, I mean, family members, right? If you have a family member that's like, you know, somebody that's hot-headed, you're like, no, nah, he's always hot-headed. No, nah, like, just take the time to understand what the person faced and, you know, what they had to live through, right? Yeah. And then coming here and have to face y'all people, <laughs> right? With all the judgment and everything else. They have to readjust who they were from the war to society. Uh, so that can be a big change. It is. So uh, let's, you know, uh, sympathize with them a little bit more and try to understand them so we could know uh, how to help them better. And also, like, for them as well, like, to seek help. Because, you know, at the end of the day, they had a mission. They had a responsibility and it's not like we cannot judge them. If somebody, let's say, went to the army and they were like in the war, they killed somebody. We're not here to judge. They were placed in the situation because they had a job, you know. Yeah. It's okay to seek for help. We're not going to say you were murdered. We're not going to say you did this, you did that. Because at the end of the day, you were protecting your country. You were doing it for something good. So seek help. Talk to somebody that can, you know, help you and then us to listen. Absolutely. Yeah. And like the Bible does acknowledge that we go to difficult times. Of course. Right? The Bible, you know, Everything. also acknowledge that we as human will suffer. Um, you know, and what we need to remember is to rely on God. Right? Um, especially during our difficult times. Right, not to rely on our own strength and understanding. Right, um, the verse says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you." I know a lot of people imply that to be gifts, to be uh, money, to be um, uh, prosperity, and all that. But all these things sh shall be added unto you is love, peace. You know, all those things are things that God provides to you, even in the middle of a storm. You know, um, just rely on him. Yeah, um, of course. Sometimes we trust more in men than we trust God, right? Uh, if he lays hands on me, then I'll be saved. If he just pray for me, then, then I'll, be I'll, I'll be released from this, you know, bondage. Yeah. You know, nah, like, you don't need anybody to do that for you. It's good if you have people, you know, that prays for you. That's that's of really course. good. Yeah. But you need to find faith in God for yourself. For yourself. So when you go to him and you're like, Father, you know, like you are my provider, you know, and I'm coming to you as your child. And this is what I'm facing, yeah. you know, and I'm not, you know, I know this is, there's a reason for it, right? If not, you wouldn't allow me to go through to it. Go through. And, and it's hard. I was talking to my cousin and she was like, you know, I, it's been hard for me to swallow. He will never give me anything, uh, you know, uh, that I can't bear. You know, and I'm like, cuz, <laughs> like, you just got to trust it. Yeah. And I know it's hard because I feel the, I feel sometimes the same way. But we got to trust that God is in total control. control. Yeah. And, and yes, he will not give us anything we can't bear. It doesn't mean that he's going to automatically remove it just because we say, Lord, I had enough. And I had these moments, man, where I'm like, God, <laughs> man, you need to do something about like, this. I, think we I had go. enough of this, but his timing is perfect. Of you course, know, of and, and he said he will never leave. He will always be with us. And the hardest time and the hardest moment when we think that we are alone, God is walking in those sands with us. He is, because, yeah. you know, it's one of the things that um, there was a moment, like a season where it's like, I felt like God was not here at all. Like he was not there, or the he was a, a complete silence. The devil was a liar. Uh, yes, the devil was a liar. But I did feel like that, though. I did, and I was like, "Bro, I cannot do it anymore." But then, in the in the midst of that season, it just it just remind me how we always says, you know, God's timing. So I was like, mm. sometimes you know, God lives outside of time. He's not. So just because I'm dealing with this in this season, it's because he already. He, then I was like, you know what? I need to move forward and understand that. Yes, he's here with me, but at the same time, he's already preparing something better. Yeah. So the reason why you feel him in the silence is because he's been working, you know. Yeah. He's not here. You don't feel him in this time because he's already worked this time and moving forward and preparing something better. So I think I wanted to say to people out there is have hope. Have Absolutely. hope. Like, you need to have hope. Because yeah. if one thing is not working, you need to have hope that, you know, God is doing... You have to get the positive out of it. Yeah. God is doing something bigger and bigger, and you know it's going to get better. Absolutely. Um, 
I'm really glad that neither of you guys brought this verse up. What's up? I'm really glad. And to be honest, you guys set it up perfectly for me. But um, for me personally, you know, I I have struggled with, you know, mental health and, and all, all of the stuff, you know. And a verse that really carried me through that was Romans 8, verse 18. And it says, um, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are nothing worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed to us. And it's like, we only we can only see what we're going through right now of you know course. like you don't know what's coming you don't know what's what's ahead you don't know what's next for you you know like yes everything that you're feeling is valid and it's it's real and it it's you know like it's hard and no one is trying to discredit that or just like you know but there's so much more out there there's you have a whole life ahead of you you know there's there's so much there's so much and it's like don't let how you feel now uh, stop you from reaching all of that you know because let's say when you were five and you and you hit your ankle on that razor scooter and you thought the world was about to end it didn't it was it didn't it, <laughs> it, didn't. it hurt it sure did <laughs> but it hurt it hurt you know and life is gonna hurt sometimes there's it's going to hurt a lot and it's, it's really hard and it's really tough, but you know, you need to have hope and you need to have faith. You need to really stay, stay strong and stay grounded in your relationship with God. And, you know, you need to really know that he's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. Like knowing the word and knowing the verses that say this is one thing, but you need to drill it into your mind, drill it into your heart, into your being that he's yes. not going to leave you. He is there for you. Like no matter how it feels right now in the moment, he's there for you because if he wasn't, would you be here? The answer is no, but you're here. So he's here for you. You know, like you need to, you need to really drill that into yourself and instill that into your mind. So when you're going through these times, you have that in the back of your brain and you're thinking and you're like, I know that whatever I'm going through is temporary. No matter how overwhelming and how much it might feel, like you're going to get through it if you give it to him, if you allow him to get you through it. If you take matters into your own hands, you're you're not going to get through it, you know? Because you're going to end it. Yeah. But you need to sit there sometimes in those uncomfortable feelings and, you know, you need to... You need to, you need to give yourself and you need to give God the room to give you a lesson because looking back on that you're gonna sit there and you're gonna learn from it you're gonna be like tra, 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 and you're gonna get you're gonna get you're gonna gain something out of it you're not going through it for no reason you know yeah. that, that that's true and then i feel like sometimes when we in pain like we are so you know like blindsided yeah. by the pain and it's like all we see is the problem we're so focused on the negativity but it's just sometimes we have to sit back and just like yes I promise you, if there's, you go into 100 problems, there'll be one of them that's positive. You're going to be like, okay, this is a good thing. Let me take that small thing. Because, you know, just like I said, if you plant it, it will go and it'll it give you something grow. bigger. Absolutely. Get that and, you know, and get the positive out of it. Get yeah. the something because there will be something. Yeah. You don't go through, God is not allowing you to go through something without having you being prepared. Use the resources. Yeah. You, have, you have the resources from previous season where you couldn't, handle it from previous season when you saw somebody go into a tough time so you have those resources it's just when we in pain we don't see it and it's yeah. hard that's why you need to seek help yes. go and talk to somebody yeah. um just remember that god is sovereign he is the author of life right and he is over life and death right it's contrary to his design for you to take your own life um we all suffer but our suffering is temporary yeah it is right um especially when you know that you have hope from god right just hold on to hope um then rather than you know to take your own life because you are hopeless um and as christians you know we are care we are called to care for one another so we need to pay more attention to the people that surround us yeah. um i am my brother and my sister's keeper right and i hope my brother and my sister can say the same about me 
Mm -hmm. um, too often we see people going through things and we beat them down more than, you know, we reached out a hand to help them out. You know, um, we need to be a little bit more attentive to the emotional state of the people around us. Yeah. So that way we know how to be present for them. Uh, whether it is in prayer or just, hey, friend, let's go grab a bite. Um, hey, do you want to talk? I know we haven't, you know, spoken in a while, but, you know, I was just checking on you. Those things, they, they go a long way. It does. Right? And when depression sinks in, sink in uh, it can literally take somebody out. But if you are the person that God called you to be, I'm not telling you you have to be there for everybody, right? But um, you know one or two people that are going through something and you have the thought to pick up a phone and call them, but you neglect to do that. And don't live with the regret of not just obeying um, the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, sometimes we just got to do what we don't want to do because it's the right things to do. Ooh, that was good. Okay, yeah. say it again, say it again. <laughs> I don't know if I can repeat that. <laughs> You know what? They can go back and watch it. We'll be minded for y'all. And watch it. Yeah. And with that being said, uh, remember the suicide uh, helpline is 988. If you or anyone you know are, is experiencing uh, suicidal thoughts or any other you know issues dealing with mental health, uh, you could call 988. Uh, they have um, a 24-hour service. Mm -hmm. Um, and they will help you. Um, it's not the same as 911. They actually have professionals behind those uh, 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 telephone that are trained uh, to help you. So please, um, before you end your life, before um, you take this precious gift that God gave, give you, uh, give somebody a chance to mm -hmm. reach you uh, where you at and give God the opportunity to bring you out yeah. of whatever you are facing. Um, with that being said, um, spread the word. Yes. It, it is yes. suicide uh, prevention. Prevention, prevention month. month. <laughs> so let's check in with those people that's been isolating themselves. That's been giving you all their uh, Jordans. Um, yeah, it's not a good sign. It's not. Right? They're not, they're not um, being that great. Nah, you know, if they are giving their precious possessions away, uh, these are all by professionals signs of, you know, uh, suicide, um, ideation and, uh, exit plans. Yeah. So please pay attention to those things. And, um, yeah, we pray that God bless you and that God keep you, uh, let his face shine upon you and yeah. give you peace. With that being said, this is an episode of Tat to Tat to Tat. Tap in. Let's go.